Today we're going to be doing a compression check on this 1997 Lexus LX450, aka Toyota Land Cruiser, with a 4.5 liter inline 6 1FZ FE motor. Uh, this is in preparation for the sale of this vehicle, but it's also a good step by step tutorial if you ever want to do a compression check on your Land Cruiser or really any vehicle at all. Um, I'll walk through the steps, show you the results, and that way you can uh, plan for the next time you want to do a compression check, either on your own vehicle to see the condition of the motor or on a vehicle that you're planning on purchasing so that you know what uh, you're getting into. First thing you're going to need is a compression test kit. Most of them look something like this. Some of them have more attachments, less attachments. I've had this one for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. And it's not the most expensive one. I think I paid maybe 30 bucks for it. You can find them on Amazon, Harbor Freight, eBay, most auto parts stores. They've got different attachment for different size plug um, threads, and they've got generally the um, longer hose, your pressure gauge with the release valve right here. And uh, some of them come with uh, a couple of these to where you can just shove them into a hole and uh, do a compression test that way for various applications. I'll show you how this works in a minute. So we're going to go get the uh, hood popped open and go through the steps required to get things ready for a compression test. First, you want to pop your hood. All right. Depending on what motor you're working on, identify where your spark plugs are, where your fuse box is. Those are the two main things you're going to need access to. This is an inline six engine in this truck. All of our spark plugs are in the center, um, in the valley, if you want to call it that. Very easy to get to. You've got front uh, valley cover and a rear valley cover that need to come off. This intake hose needs to come off. And then the spark plug wires need to be popped off in order to access the spark plugs. Next thing you need to see is where your EFI relay is, your electronic fuel injection. And on this truck, it is right here, EFI main. Um, so we're going to pop this cover off and remove the EFI relay, again, this one, EFI main. So we're gonna remove that one. The reason you wanna do that is so that the ECU is not trying to inject fuel into your cylinders while you're trying to do a compression check. You want your cylinders to be dry so you can get an accurate compression number. If they're wet, you're gonna get a falsely high compression number. Um, some people that wanna cheat compression numbers, they'll either put a little cap full of oil in there or let the EFI continue running so that you've got fuel in the cylinders and they're wet. And that moisture, that oil or that fuel, uh, creates additional sealing around the piston rings and gives you a falsely high compression reading. So we wanna make sure that that EFI relay is out. Let me go ahead and pull it right now while we're at it. It's this one here, should pull right up. All right, that's out. I'm gonna place it here. Well, you know what? I'm gonna put it in here and take it into the garage so that I don't misplace it. All right, EFI relays out. So that's all ready to go. Next thing we wanna do is take this valley cover off, um, either Phillips head or 10 millimeter socket. All right, let's get this off. We'll put it here along with the bolts. Next, I'm gonna take this intake hose off. You've got a 10 millimeter head on the clamp here and one right up here. All right, we've got the lid for the air filter box off and the intake hose is off. We've got it right there. Next, we're gonna remove that rear valley cover. The two valley covers are off. Now we're gonna pull off the spark plug wires. All the spark plug wires are out. Just for additional safety, I'm also going to pull the coil wire. You can pull the coil wire from the center of your distributor cap or from the coil itself, which is down here. I'm gonna pull it off of the coil. I also pulled this PCV breather hose off um, the valve cover breather hose and I lodged it over the side just so it's out of the way and we've got plenty of room to work. Next, we need to pull the spark plugs out. Some people like to do them one by one and put them back. I'm gonna pull all six out, set them aside. That way we've got no compression in any of the cylinders um, that's slowing down the starting or anything and we've got full crank uh, power 
to uh, get the best reading on the compression test as possible. And then once we're finished, we'll put the spark plugs back in. All the spark plugs are out. I put them in order over here so we can inspect them. These are fairly new. There's just a, a couple hundred miles on them. They're the Denso Iridium plugs, a big upgrade from the factory plugs that I think were either copper or copper platinum. And I'm just going through and checking, make sure all of them uh, are good and consistent and we don't have too much suit on any of them or too much white, which would mean a cylinder is running lean and we don't have any oil on the stems, which is good because the valve cover because the valve cover gaskets were replaced and no oil seeping through. So all good there. Next thing you wanna do is get the components from your compression test kit that you're gonna need. In my case, it's just the main hose. These are the correct size threads. Make sure your threads are clean and you don't have any gunk on there. Uh, put a little dab of oil on your O-ring. That way it uh, comes in and out easy and it doesn't snag up in there. And let me walk you through the steps. So just barely get this thing snug, threaded into your hole. Um, you might want to straighten out the rubber hose if it's real curled up and you've got a deep uh, socket or a deep uh, valley there where your spark plug goes. So I've got it just barely threaded in there. As you can see, it'll still turn. And I just got barely enough pressure on it so the O-ring will hold pressure during a compression test. Um, next thing you want to do is get your gauge put on there. Um, they attach different ways. Most of them have one of these connectors here, just like you would on some air tools. And get that put on. Now, this button here is a release valve, and this will hold pressure until you hit the release valve. That way, if you're cranking it over for a few seconds, you come back, you check the pressure, the pressure stays on the gauge, and then you hit the release valve, and then you disconnect, and you go on to the next cylinder. So right now, we're on cylinder number one, and we're going to go in the car, crank it over for about four seconds or so, and we're going to do the same for every cylinder thereafter. Let's go check the gauge. There we go, we're right at 175. Now we're gonna hit the valve. Oh. All right, disconnect the gauge. And we'll undo this and go to the next cylinder. And what we're looking for on the pressure is not necessarily a number, high or low, because each one of these gauges, I mean, they're not the most accurate. Some of them are 10% off, some of them are 15, 20% off. The number itself doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is the consistency across all the cylinders. You don't want, you know, 15% difference from one cylinder to the next. So we've got this almost in there. All right, let's get the gauge. That's ready to go. All right, let's check the gate. All right, we're just a couple PSI higher on this one. Still looks good. Let's go to the next cylinder. All right, we've got it hooked up for cylinder number three now. Let's check this one. All right, let's see where this one's at. All right, right about where cylinder number two was. Let's check the next one. We're gonna go to number four. All right, now we're on cylinder number four. Let's check that one. All right, let's check the gauge. We're right at 175 on this one. Let's pull this. And check cylinder number five. All right. We're hooked up on cylinder number five, right there. Let's crank it. All right, let's check the gate. We're right at 178 or so, give or take. Let's pull that and we'll check cylinder number six. All right, we're on the last one, cylinder number six. Let's go crank it. All right, let's check the gauge. And right at 170, right below 175. So very consistent across the board, very little variation between the cylinders, which is 
great. That means our engine is fairly healthy and uh, we're good to go. So what that tells us is we're holding good compression, piston rings are healthy, valves are seating correctly, the intake and exhaust valves, and overall we've got a fairly healthy motor. Now if you noticed, I only let the engine turn over four times for each of these compression tests for all six cylinders. What I like to do is go back. Uh, so the first round, I generally like to do uh, a short burst, enough to get compression in the cylinders, but not enough to show us what essentially what our max compression is going to be. Um, I'm going to go back now and let the motor crank over about six times for each cylinder and see if the numbers are any different, which they should be a little bit higher, um, and see how different they are, just for kicks. Overall, we already know our motor is healthy, but I just want to see where the max compression number is. So this time we'll start at the back. Since our hose is already in cylinder number six, we'll start with six and then go five, four, three, two, one. So the first one is going to be cylinder number six. All right. So this one was under 175 before. Now we're, I don't know, what is that? 180, give or take. So just a little bit higher. Let's check number five. All right, we're hooked up to number five. Let's see where that gauge is sitting. Yeah, looks like maybe five PSI higher than before. All right, let's check. Let's check number four. I'm over in the front of the motor now because I can actually reach. All right, that's at zero. So let's crank it over for number four. Yeah, just a couple PSI higher than before. Oh, sorry, I hit the valve there, a little bit leaked out. We were about five PSI over 175. Okay, let's check number three. All right, we're hooked up to number three. Let's crank it. Let's check the gauge. Yep, we're right around, is that 185 or something? So about consistently, it looks like about five to eight PSI higher than four cranks versus what is it, six, seven cranks that we're doing now. So I'll move this over to cylinder number four. I'm sorry, number two. That last one was number three. So this is number two. All right, hooked up to cylinder number two. Let's crank it. Let's check the gauge. Yep, consistently about five to eight PSI higher than the shorter cranks. And lastly, let's hook it up to cylinder number one and check that one. All right, cylinder number one, gauge zeroed out. Let's crank it. Perfect. Very consistent across the board. Now we're going to put everything back in the opposite order. Spark plugs first. Make sure to put some anti-seize on the threads of your spark plugs on any aluminum head vehicle. Um, so we're going to put some anti-seize on the spark plug threads, put them all back in, get the spark plug wires back in, and the boots, the one bolt that goes through the boot, uh, back down. Um, not the boot, the um, wire organizer, plastic pieces. Get the valley covers on, intake hose back on, get everything buttoned up and ready to go. And then finally, don't forget, you got to put your relay in for your EFI and plug your coil wire back in right there. Uh, then give it a crank, make sure everything's good to go, and you should be all set. Hopefully this video was helpful for you on how to do a compression check. Um, 
If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you're interested in this vehicle in particular, it's about to go on bringatrailer.com. That's the reason for all the test videos you see on the channel and giving people the best view possible into every detail I can think of and the condition of the vehicle. Uh, so make sure to like, share, subscribe for more content like this about all kinds of different vehicles. And if you have any questions at all about the compression test process or this vehicle in general, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'm always happy to get back with you guys. See you next time. I've got the plug wires back on. I want to show you guys one more thing that might be of interest to folks is the throttle body inlet. There's no black suit in here. Nothing signifying excessive blow by coming back through the intake or any gross stuff coming back through the throttle body or gunking up on the throttle plate or anything like that. Everything's super clean, great shape, good condition. Anyway, hope that was useful for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Valley cover's back on. Now let's get the PCV hose back on. I replaced a bunch of these hoses and the PCV valve and everything recently as well. Uh, they're in some of the other videos if you want to take a look. All right, that's there, snug. DFI relay back on. Coil wire. Nice click. Air intake hose. Make sure you never over tighten these. That's it. Everything's back and buttoned together. Let's give her a crank, make sure everything is working correctly and we didn't miss anything. Runs beautifully as always. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I don't remember if it was any of the other videos, but yes, power antenna does work. All the way up, all the way down. And as soon as the radio turns off, it goes the rest of the way down. I always keep it in the down position. Uh, because it's a little bit tall and I don't want to hit the top of the garage there.